All right, so welcome back to Arc Nova, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about not necessarily what I like about the game or dislike about the game. It's not going to be that kind of review. It's more going to be some helpful tips and strategies um, when playing this game. Because in this game, there are so many different animals, so many different animals. You'll never play with every single animal in a single game because there's just too many to count. And when you go to a zoo, normally, everybody has an animal they want to see. You know, they all have, we all have our animals that we absolutely love in this game, and we all have animals that we hate, okay? We, especially when you go to a zoo, there's going to be animals you don't want to see, and there's going to be animals you do want to see, right? And, you know, usually one of those animals might be, for instance, an elephant. You know, most people, they want to see an elephant when they go to the zoo, or they want to see a tiger, or they want to see a giraffe. And when they get cards like this, like in the beginning of the game, if they get this Asian elephant, they might want to hold on to this Asian elephant because they want to play it into their zoo because that would be so cool. And yes, it would be nice to uh, hold on to this elephant and play it as soon as possible. But in this game, if you get too attached to certain animals like that, it could end up messing up your entire strategy. And not only that, if you get too attached to an animal, you also might not have very much fun. Because you see, if you hold on to the animals that you love the most, you might not be able to play them for quite some time. And then you won't be able to do anything for quite some time. And that will definitely, obviously, ruin the game for you. And I have seen players who will skip animals they don't like simply because they don't like them. Now, of course, it does make sense to skip an animal that you can't play right now because you don't meet the requirements to play said animal. That is understandable, and that is strategically wise to perhaps not keep an animal that you cannot play right away or anytime soon. Now, that red panda here is actually not that hard to play, but like, for instance, the Indian rhinoceros here is a very hard animal to play in the beginning of the game, and so holding on to it for who knows how long could definitely be detrimental to your strategy and to your enjoyment of the game. So when you play this game, it's actually strategically wise to not hold on to the animals that we all know and love the most, like the giant panda, perhaps. And the giant panda is perhaps the hardest animal to play in this game because you need a partnership with Asia, you need another bear in your zoo, and there's not that many bears in this game, and you need an herbivore already as well just to play it. So it takes a long time, and you might never, ever get this icon to show up you might never ever find this card in the entire game because maybe your opponents will get it instead of you or something like that. So holding on to this animal in the beginning of the game is a huge, huge mistake. Same thing with the Asian elephant. And so that's why I wanted to talk about some of the cards here and what animals, you know, you should try to work towards and keep and obviously, with that said, there is a lot of different animal icons, okay? And that means there's a lot of different strategies in this game. Literally, just going for a certain type of animal is strategically wise. You know, like just going for the herbivores. That could be very strategically wise. Of course, it's nice to have diversity. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a diversity of animals in your zoo. It's good to have a few different types of animals, like maybe some carnivores, some herbivores, some birds, and some reptiles. It's good to have a variety, but it's not necessarily a necessity to have it. And it's also strategically wise to go for animals based on certain conservation projects you get or certain conservation projects that start out the game, you start out the game with, or, obviously, sponsor cards that help you play certain types of animals. Like, this expert in herbivores is good for an herbivore strategy if you're going to go the herbivore route, for instance, you know? And so is this one. And so is this sponsor, obviously. So, and then, of course, this conservation card is also good for herbivores. So there's some, there's definitely some conservation cards and some, and some sponsor cards that are going to help you with a particular animal strategy. 
Now, one thing that's really hard to do is the bear icons. So I'm not going to talk, talk much about these particular icons because that is the hardest strategy to, to, to accomplish. And you might not have very much fun if you're only trying to go after bears. So, or at least animals that have the bear icon on it. So you definitely want to not just simply pick animals you like. Okay, I have seen many players skip out on certain types of reptiles because they didn't like reptiles. And that's understandable. Most people, when they go to a zoo, they don't want to see a Nile crocodile or they don't want to see a, a lizard like this guy. Or they certainly don't want to see a venomous snake like the green mamba. You know, OK, maybe they want to see a spurred tortoise. That, that, that's understandable. People like tortoises. But, you know, most people are going to want to see these kinds of animals in their zoo. And when they're building their own zoo, they might completely skip out on these reptiles, especially maybe the Komodo dragon here, because they simply just don't like reptiles. But that is a bad mistake, because you see in this game, the reptiles are overpowered. This reptile strategy, going the reptile strategy, is a almost a surefire win strategy. I mean, that's, I'm not saying you can't win if you go with primates or with birds or something like that. But you, if you have the option, if you manage to get one of these good sponsor cards or conservation cards based on, on uh, obviously, reptiles, for instance, or if you just happen to start out with a bunch of reptiles, you should not pass out. You should not pass up a chance to go the strategy of putting reptiles in your zoo. And in fact... In fact, even if you're not going to go heavily on reptiles, if you do manage to get one or two, you should get them because they don't take up a lot of space in your zoo. Unlike most of the other animals, that the, especially the carnivores and the herbivores, they're going to take up a lot of space in your zoo. But reptiles, a lot of them do not take up much space. And the reason why I say that reptiles are overpowered in this game is this exact reason here. Once you get the reptile house, if you're going to go the reptile strategy, you definitely want to get a reptile house. But once you get a reptile house, you can have almost an unlimited amount of reptiles because you can, con you can constantly, continuously put reptiles that have this zero on them, hence this common, common gamma here, you can constantly put these reptiles that have zero on the reptile house into a reptile house because they don't take up any space at all. So even if your reptile house is full of other reptiles that are bigger, like the Komodo dragon and the Nile crocodile, you can continuously continue to put these types of reptiles into a reptile house. So like, for instance, uh, the Nile crocodile takes up three spaces, you know, but and then some of these only take up one space, but then there's a lot of these that only take up zero spaces completely. So there's one, and there's, let's see, two that take up zero spaces, and there's three, and four, and let's see here. There's five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight reptiles that take up literally no space in your reptile house. And there's a lot of reptiles here that only take up one space in your reptile house too. So you could have a lot of reptiles in your zoo. And doing so will obviously save room for other bigger animals in your zoo. Maybe perhaps even enough room for that elephant you've always wanted in your zoo, right? Because you decided to go the reptile route or something like that, if it ever shows up, of course. Now, there's a lot of people, I've read some comments online, some people have found that the whole drawing cards is completely random, and um, they're not having that much fun with the game because they are drawing cards that they just can't utilize. But honestly, is it the reason why you can't utilize a card because of the requirements, or is it because you just don't like this animal? or a particular animal. In fact, it happened to me the other day. I was playing, uh, let's see, let me find herbivores. Let's see here, I think it's an herbivore. Let me, there was, I was playing this just yesterday with my friends, and one of my friends got an animal they didn't right, like. They just didn't really like it that much, the dugon. And they were gonna discard it. Not because they couldn't play it, because we had just entered the stage where the, the so-called, uh, opponent, my friend, had just upgraded his animal's action. 
And so therefore, he could have played this almost immediately once he built an enclosure for it. And it's a, and obviously, it's a big enclosure. But he was going to pass up on it because he just didn't see the point in playing it in a zoo because he just didn't really like it that much or didn't know much about it, you know. And so I convinced him not to. And he ended up playing it into a zoo and he had a great time playing it into a zoo. And it opened up a whole bunch of new options for him because he went and had and played it because he could have, because he wasn't limited by obviously the requirements. So that's why you shouldn't pass up on an animal just because you don't like it. I mean, yes, if you really hate reptiles and you don't want to play reptiles, that's perfectly your choice. I mean, that's perfectly up to you. But don't blame other people that you're having a horrible time playing the game because you're not getting any good cards. Because like I said, these reptiles these reptiles are good cards. They are the, probably some of the best cards you can put into your zoo. And now, since the object of the game is to put animals into your zoo, reptiles are just the best way to do that because you can get so many and then you can save space for some other animals, of course, because you don't want to just be known as the reptile zoo. You want to have other animals besides reptiles, and that's perfectly understandable. Same here. I like reptiles, but I still want to have other animals besides reptiles into my zoo. But yes, that's the whole point. You want to try to just, you know, go for whatever animals you get. Just because you don't know much about the animal or don't like the animal or it's not an animal you want to see in a zoo doesn't mean you should pass up on putting it into your zoo. Now, if you, of course, can't meet said requirements, maybe maybe you get this one early on, the Nile Crocodile, but it's going to be a long time before you can play it because you don't have any other reptiles, period. Then, yes, I would, I would su suggest not holding on to the Nile Crocodile because it will be some time before you are able to play it into your zoo because you have to have three other reptiles already, basically, in your zoo. But the point is, the point is, you definitely want to not be basically biased towards certain animals if you want to have a good time and obviously have a fully functional zoo. And obviously, if you want to have a really good chance of winning the game, obviously, you don't want to pass up on animals just because you don't like those animals. Now, obviously, reptiles is a strong strategy to go for, but there are other strategies that you can go for besides reptiles that are really powerful and useful. And one of those is the herbivores. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different herbivores, and some of these herbivores are flock animals. So that means that if you have a flock animal in your zoo, like the red deer, for instance, it can share space with another herbivore in the same size enclosure and up. So if you had an elephant, you could actually put this red deer in with your elephant because even though you could easily put this into a three size enclosure, you could put it into the five size enclosure with the elephant too. That's fine because it's three and up. So, I mean, that's why herbivores is another strong strategy. So if you want to, if you get, if you manage to get yourself a lot of herbivores, maybe going the herbivore strategy would be best for you because like I said, not all of these, of course, are easy to play. Like the Grevy zebra here isn't very easy, but it is a flock animal, right? And the African bush elephant isn't very easy to play, obviously, because it takes a while to upgrade your animal's action, obviously. But you know, there's still a lot of good animals in here in the herbivore section, and the herbivores are definitely a strong strategy to go for. Now, now there is some there is one thing to note with the primates. So when you're gonna if you're gonna go the primate route, you you want to make sure you know this ahead of time. Primates are not going to be in every continent. Because one of the strategies in this game is to obviously try to play certain animals that go into certain continents. And I'm not saying you can't have a good variety from different continents of animals from all over the globe. That's actually good. Diversity is good. But you definitely want to try to play some animals from the same continent because you'll definitely want to partner up with some continents during the course of the game. And so if you're going to go the primate route... The continents you should partner up with early on in the game is Africa and the Americas and Asia, okay? There are no primates, at least in this game, there are no primates in Europe. 
there are in real life there are primates in Europe, uh, Spain for instance, but there are no primates in this game that are going to be in Europe. Same thing with Australia. There are no primates in this game for Australia. So those icons will never show up for those two continents. So if you're going to go the primate route, you probably should not go for Australia or for obviously Europe as a partnership first because there's just no there's no point. You're not going to get any discounts for playing said primates because none of these actually live in those continents, in those areas. So that is something to note if you're going to go the primate route. And there's a lot of cool primates in here. I happen to absolutely love monkeys. Of course, this particular spider monkey here, one of, there's one in person in real life that absolutely hates my guts. But, in, but regardless of the case, I still love monkeys quite a bit. And if I have some monkeys in my starting hand... I may go the monkey route just because it's a still a pretty good strategy to go for. And just because I may not like a particular monkey, maybe not this one necessarily, doesn't mean I'm not going to play it into my zoo. Because, like I said, you don't want to pick animals based just on animals you like. You want to try to go for animals that are easy, obviously, to put into your zoo, which are reptiles mostly, and obvious other animals other animals, small animals and things like that, that don't require huge requirements. Now, I don't know for sure about this, but I think that's what the designers of this game were going for. Usually when people go to a zoo, obviously they're going to want to see certain animals. And in real life, most people don't like certain types of animals. But they wanted to obviously, I think they wanted to kind of spread the love of all animals equally, you know, because we obviously all pick our favorites, animals we like the most. We tend to go for that, obviously, um, and that's understandable. But I think the idea was they wanted to try to basically give us a, an appreciation for all wildlife. That's the true message, I believe, for this game, because obviously... We will go to a zoo and avoid certain areas just because we don't like certain animals. Like, I would probably not go into a, uh insect house because I don't like spiders and things like that. And thankfully, there are no tarantulas in this game, so I don't have to worry about there being any animals in this game that I absolutely hate because they're all not in this game, fortunately for me. So that's that's what I've noticed about this game. Now, um, the petting zoo animals, you, if you get a couple of petting zoo animals to start the game off with, you should keep them because they are going to get you a total of 18 appeal. After you get three of them into your zoo, you're going to get 18 appeal from them at least. And that's a lot of appeal when you think about it, because you could potentially play, um, you could potentially play a bunch of animals and still not meet, make, 18 appeal with some of the other species. And since they all are going to go into a single petting zoo tile, they each only are, are all basically only taking up one space each in your zoo. So that will leave some space for other animals. So for the bigger animals and things like that. So if you do manage to get yourself a petting zoo animal or two in the beginning of the game, you shouldn't simply dismiss it because maybe you don't like said, you know, animal. Maybe you don't like sheep that much or Maybe horses aren't your thing, or you, you would rather eat the rabbit than have a rabbit as a pet, for instance, or see a rabbit in a zoo for that matter, right? Um, most people like llamas and obviously the wallaby here. But, you know, obviously sometimes when you go to a zoo, unless you've got kids and they want to feed the goats, most likely most people, when they go to a zoo, they don't want to see a petting zoo animal, depending on what it is. Of course, obviously, these two here obviously aren't part of that equation of petting zoo animals that you wouldn't want to see in a zoo, most likely. Maybe this one too. But you should still probably go this route if you start off with a couple of these. You shouldn't skip them or dismiss them simply because you just don't want that animal in your zoo because you don't like it. Because, like I said, the petting zoo strategy is a good little strategy. It's a cheap, good little strategy. It doesn't cost that much money. That's another thing. It doesn't cost much money. You don't have to build a whole bunch of exhibits for them. 
and they're all going to take up one space in your zoo each, basically. But you can only have three anyway. So once you get your three, then you can't obviously get any more. So if you end up having four to start off with, obviously you're only going to need three of them, right? And so that's something to note with the petting zoo strategy for sure. Now, obviously, the, the, the aviary is another special tile that you can place in your zoo, and, and, the, and that is obviously very powerful and useful as well. But there is one thing to note. There are lots of birds in this game that cannot go into the large aviary. This emu here cannot go into a large aviary, even though it has this special ability that lets you place one for free if possible, but like I said, it can't actually go into one at all. So that is something to note. If you do decide to go the bird strategy, you may want to try to go for birds that will obviously be able to go into an aviary like this king vulture here but then obviously most people don't like vultures either so they might just skip out on this on entirely because they simply don't like vultures but it is a hard one to play too so i can understand if you completely skip this animal because it's going to be a while before you can play it because you don't have any birds yet if you get this in the beginning of the game maybe it would be wise to you know go for something else Unless, you know, you have another bird in your hand, in your starting hand besides this, then maybe, maybe it's worth keeping. But, you know, like the Andean condor isn't that hard to play. Most people still like condors, obviously. But, you know, this is another bird that can go into a large aviary, and it only takes up one space. But look, it takes up five spaces in your zoo, but once you get the large aviary, it only takes up one space. And this one does three in one. So, obviously... Going the bird strategy is also very useful because there are birds that take up large, huge enclosures that you have to worry about taking up a lot of space. But if you go for this strategy and get this special tile here, then obviously you're going to free up some space for other animals too. So then you're not going to be known as the, you know, the bird zoo, you know, because you'll have other animals besides just birds. But obviously not all of these birds can go into an aviary. Now, I don't know why they decided to do that. And because, honestly, all the reptiles can go into the reptile house, but obviously not all these birds can go into an aviary. Thankfully, it looks like the bald eagle can, though. But the barn owl can't for some reason, right? Which doesn't make a lot of sense. But maybe they did that so they wouldn't be too overpowered, perhaps. There are a lot of birds here, too, obviously. And this one also only takes up one space in your large aviary. But there are some that will take up more than one space. The African ostrich takes up four spaces in your large aviary, but it takes up a five-size enclosure. Is it worth it? I don't know. It depends. How many other birds do you have that only take up one space in an aviary, but also take up a huge chunk of your zoo, you know? So that's another thing to note. Is it worth it? But that's the only one. The rest of the birds that can go into a large aviary only take up one space. So as long as you don't get that ostrich, but you get a lot of birds that can go into an aviary, you're going to have a lot of extra space in your zoo for other animals, obviously. But like I said, the bird strategy is a solid strategy that you can go for. But like I said, you shouldn't skip an, an animal based on simply because you just don't like the animal that much. Most people like peacocks, but or peafowls, I should say. But or uh, this one, for instance. But like I said, there are some animals here that aren't on everyone's favorite list. I don't think this one's on a lot of people's favorite list. But you shouldn't, you sh like I said, you shouldn't skip it just because you don't like it. You should only skip it if you can't keep it because you're going to have to discard cards anyway. Or if, like I said, you're not going to be able to meet the requirements for it anytime soon. But that's the thing. That's the point. When you're building a zoo, you obviously, in this game, you're going to want to go for animals you like. That's understandable. But try to also not skip the animals that you don't like, if at all possible, because some of them will definitely help out big time. Some of the really cool ones that have... That's another thing. They made it so that way the animals that most people don't know about or like are easy to play, and the ones that people obviously do like that made them the hardest to play usually and so that's why you have to be careful when you're playing this game you don't want to get carried away discarding a whole bunch of animals simply because you don't like them 
because then you'll be taking you'll be wasting your turns playing other animal uh, play, wasting your turns drawing lots of other cards until you get the animal you like and then but during that time if you're playing against other players then of course they're probably doing a whole lot better than you because they're going to go for animals that just works for their zoo currently you know i mean i have had times where i couldn't go the reptile route because i just couldn't get that many reptiles and so i tried something else i went for predators or i went for herbivores or primates or something like that and i had a great time because even though I wasn't playing necessarily my favorite animals, I was still playing a lot of cool animals anyways. And since I like pretty much every animal except for tarantulas, it just works out for me. And of course, obviously, I like the fact that my favorite animals, the reptiles, are the best strategy to go for in this game. It is the best strategy that you can possibly go for. And there have been times when I've even passed out on reptiles simply because I had so many reptiles to start off with and I couldn't keep all of them, right? And so that might happen too. But I really just, I just really love the reptiles in this game. I really love that they are like the powerhouse of the game. But don't pass up on other animals simply because reptiles are strong. Like I said, the herbivores will definitely help save some space in your zoo since there are some flock animals in here that can share space with other animals and there are some small animals here that you know like the common wombat and stuff and the platypus that don't take up much space in your zoo either or this malant this uh, mountain taper for instance so that's another thing and then obviously with all these animals there are still so many animals that aren't in this game there's no sloths, there's no snow leopards, there's no uh, fruit bats or flying foxes or any bats in, in particular. There's no bats at all. So there's a lot of animals that aren't in this game yet. And so if they ever make an expansion for this game, I suspect that they will add some of the animals that I mentioned because they haven't added those animals yet. And I could also see them maybe adding some other special tiles, maybe making some animals that are designed for the nocturnal house. Maybe they'll make a special tile someday that will be for like a nocturnal house so that way you can see bats and skunks and, and aardvarks and other animals that like to be active at night, for instance, because that's another animal that's not in this game. There's no aardvarks. And there's only one species of lemur in this game too, the ring-tailed lemur. So maybe they'll add more lemurs to this game someday as well. Who knows? Um, and who knows? Maybe they'll even probably add some insects and spiders and things like that to the game because... Obviously, that's another special tile that, who knows, that they could possibly add to this game. They could possibly add a insect house as well. Not really my idea of, you know, enjoyable. I don't know if I would go the insect route if they ever made an insect route uh, strategy. But that doesn't mean there isn't any insects I like. I mean, there's a lot of insects I like. I like praying mantises, for instance. And I like... Um, I like whip scorpions, because they're not really scorpions or spiders either. I like whip scorpions a lot too. So there's a lot of insects I do like, but obviously there's a lot of insects that I don't like, or bugs, or spiders, and things like that. So who knows? Who knows what they will do with Ark Nova in the future? Will they make an expansion for this game? I would have to assume probably at some point they might, because this is just a popular game, and popular games tend to get expansions, expansions usually. But who knows? I mean, who knows if they will or not. So I hope this helps you guys um, understand that you shouldn't simply, you know, pick an animal because you like it or obviously, you know, completely discard an animal because you don't like it. Because honestly, a lot of the animals in this game are really useful, really powerful, really fun to play with, even if you don't like a particular animal. And so... Anyways, I hope this guys this video helps you guys out. I hope you guys liked this review. If you guys liked this review, don't forget to leave me a like. And, uh, you know, leave something in the comments. Uh, tell me, um, you know, what's your favorite animal in the game? Or let me know that you like playing with reptiles. Or, you know, maybe you don't like playing with birds. Let me know. I would like to know more, more uh, people who have played this game and like to get their thoughts on, obviously, what animals they like and dislike and obviously what strategies they tend to go for and of course there's lots of other sponsor cards that i didn't even show that you know don't necessarily work with any of these animals here but there's a lot of good sponsor cards to play 
that could potentially be very helpful too that don't necessarily go with a particular animal here. But like I said, it's an awesome, awesome game. Arc Nova is super awesome. All right, so I'll see you guys again next time. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.